Welcome to the show. You're listening to Hebrew Hits, and today I am sitting down with Sam Weiser. He is a travel agent for Business Class Club. Now, during Corona, he actually decided to start things up on his own. I cannot wait for you to share everything that you've done. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's an honor to be on the show, and uh, I hope the things I can, that I say can help others. Of course. How has Corona been treating you? Um, it hasn't been easy, that's for sure. I'm in Israel at the moment. Um, it's been like, you know, since lockdown started, it's been about three, three plus months. Mm -hmm. And uh, it definitely hasn't been easy. You know, being, um, being isolated for part of the time wasn't easy for me. And uh, basically being a travel agent and not having any, uh, any work to do was also was definitely a struggle. Um, it's still a bit of a struggle. Um, but you know, one thing that I had to ask myself as soon as things got tough was why is this happening to me or why is this hap because it was happening to everyone the question is why is this happening to everyone not why it's happening to me um and the question was why is this happening to everyone and the answer was this is happening to me because it's an opportunity for me to grow and to try new things and you know that's awesome well the title for our show is KOBK so what does that actually stand for? And what does that mean for you? Uh, it stands for kill or be killed. Um, now, just a disclaimer, it's definitely a joke. Um, <laughs> I, don't believe, I don't believe in murder or killing anybody or anything of the sort. Um, I definitely don't believe in getting killed. Um, moving that aside, it's, it's a joke that has a meaning to me. Um, it's something that a friend of mine mentioned to me, um, like, again, as a joke. He's like, yeah you know, this life is all about kill or be killed, you know, because, <laughs> you know, me and him both work in sales. That's, it's just a, it's, it's a saying of like, go out there and hustle. But like, to me, this joke took on a new meaning. The meaning is like, in life, we just need to keep trying to grow and keep trying to grow. And sometimes we kill it and sometimes we get killed and it's all part of the growth process. Like having a day or having a month where we just get crushed by, by call it the universe, call it God, call it circumstances call it whatever you want when we get crushed by those circumstances and we continue to try to grow that's being killed that's fine that's all part of growing it's all it's all for the greater good it's all part of me becoming a stronger person um that's what that's what it means to me so when and, you first heard it when you first heard this uh this saying kobk kill or be killed right away it like resonated with you or did you have to actually think about it and then a few months later you're like oh my gosh that's my, that's what I'm going to live by. I just realized that I kept saying it to people after I heard it. And like, I knew it was a joke. I knew the person doesn't mean it. I knew that even in the philosophy, like, like people who do speak that way and talk about like, yeah, it's kill or be killed. Those are generally people with a lot of resentments, a lot of fears. They, they, they walk out of their house and it's like attack just so you don't get attacked. And like, it's really not the same message for me. And I knew my friend was, you know, saying it as a joke. And for me, it just turned into something else because like, I kept saying it and it had this meaning to me and like, I didn't understand what it's coming from. And my friends were starting to repeat it. And again, this joke was just going around and I'm like, what does this mean to me? Why am I repeating this? You know, I always, you know, I always have a different joke that I keep saying because humor, humor keeps me, uh, keeps things interesting. Otherwise I'm just too serious, you know, like otherwise I'm, you know, I'm very serious about my life. I'm very serious about growing. So without humor, things just get too serious. And this joke turned into, a real message for me. Wow. wow, that's that's really incredible. Have you applied KOBK to the situation that we're in right now? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I think when I started, like when coronavirus started, it wasn't even like such a terminology in my head at that point. It was just like it was like I said before, like what what does this mean to me? Why is this happening to me? What what does what does God want for me? Like what does He want me to do? And right away, okay, the first thing I did, I was like, okay, I still have work with the travel agency. There were still date changes and flight cancellations and things to do, um, you know, which made me think I'd still have a job and maybe not be as busy. So I said, okay, during the time when I'm on hold with the airlines, I'll write. So I started writing. Um, I opened the Google, a Google Drive, you know, wow. file, and I just started typing and I love it. And like, I'm writing, okay. Let's, let's put down facts about coronavirus. Let's put down like facts about what's going on. Let's see 
um, if there's anything I could say that can help other people. Um, the reason that thought came up was because I was sitting there and like, for whatever reason, from whatever things I've been through in life, I was given tools to, to deal with situations that don't meet my expectations. You know, it doesn't make it easy, but it gives me tools to deal with it without saying like, oh my God, I don't know what's happening. The world's out to get me. And then I, you know, I've begun speaking to, to people all over the world um, and people just don't have the tools. And I was like, I'm lucky. I went through whatever I went through before this happened so that I have the tools ready for a situation like this. And these people mm -hmm. are suffering. They're really, really suffering. So I decided to write about it and try to like put down in writing the thoughts in my head, you know, because when somebody says something like that, when somebody says something that's full of self-pity, I just, you know, my head kind of like, react but when i put it down on paper it comes out organized and i can actually explain the thought and explain that there is a different way to think through this and you know you don't, the suffering may be not necessary and um and uh what else was i i forgot what else i was gonna say Sorry. so so you've been writing did you want to do you want to do something with that or you're just writing for fun or is it a journal yeah yeah no i'm definitely um i'm definitely trying to make it into a book which is why oh, wow. I, changed, I changed the idea halfway through um because i was discovering so much about myself during the coronavirus i decided to change the idea of the book from being like a journal about the coronavirus to just being like a book on like how my brain works and like figuring out a different tool um wow figuring out a different tool to deal with life so i can better yet learn like what i'm trying to say is that when when i understand how my brain works then there's a lot more i could do with it so discovering a little bit more about how my brain works was inspiring to me. And I wanted to put that down on paper for anybody else who has a similar mindset and similar strengths that can use this book, use this realization that I've had and the way it's broken down to move forward and to grow. That's incredible. So when you started writing, you just started writing for, for fun. And it, it basically you're saying in quarantine, you decided to turn it into a book. Yeah. Wow, do you have a title or you don't want to share that yet? Well, it's going to be KOBK. <laughs> it's not going to be KOBK. No, I, okay. I don't want to share the title yet just in case I change it again, you know. I hear. Um, I, I'm not done the book, so and I'm not even close to done. So, you know, if I change the title twice already, I'm probably going to change it again. So I definitely don't want to choose another title yet. So had you feel that uh, writing this book has benefited your life? Like right yeah. now? In yeah. what ways? Well, A, if I'm ever that bored, I can write. Okay. So there's no excuses like, oh, I'm so bored, like, <laughs> which, is lucky, which is lucky. A lot of people now are just very, very bored. Um, so for me, there's always something I could be doing. I'm not climbing the walls. Um, another thing is that it's helping me break down. Like I said before, like sometimes when I hear a thought or a concept and my brain, and I don't agree with it, Sometimes it's not clear why I don't agree with it. It's just this reaction of like this blaring red, no, 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 wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay. Put it down on paper. Not only can I understand why it's wrong, but if I'm wrong and it's really, that concept is right, I can see that as well, which is good because, you know, I'm not Albert Einstein and even he wasn't, you know, right about everything. And like, it's important to know what's reality and what's not, especially like, like, I think writing a book that can help other people is great, but it's also a huge responsibility because everything in there has to be true. Like, if it's not true, it has to be taken out because people are going to take this, hopefully, and they're going to put it to work. They're going to put in hours or, or, or weeks of work into, into a book that, you know, is not going to get them the results that they want. What is your vision for the book? Are you planning to have, like, a how many chapters? How big is the book? Um, what, type of, what type of book is the, is the vision? That you have i i would like it to be between 150 and 200 pages wow because i don't want i don't want one of these uh longer books because part of my style is that i say things short to the point it's my strength um like if it was normal i would just make it 20 pages but i think i think people need to see more than that and people need to see more elaborations for them to understand that i'm so excited because it sounds like it's going to be a very um very educational book on just how on how you process life in general 
and how you deal with situations. So I'm excited. Do you have a release date or are you just taking it day by day? Definitely not a release date at the moment. Um, definitely taking it day by day, week by week, minute by minute at times. Um, <laughs> there, like, uh, for example, over the weekend, I just had an idea for a chapter, but I couldn't write it down because it was, uh, it was Shabbos and mm -hmm. I just like, I was like, okay, if I remember, then I remember. If I don't, I don't. And then when I, I forgot about it till I think Sunday morning, Sunday morning, I remembered that I had a chapter and I also forgot what the chapter was. So I was like, okay, I guess, uh, never mind. And then I remembered what it was. So I wrote down the chapter, oh, but wow. I couldn't write anything about it. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot just sit down and write. I could, but like, it's not going to be anything, you know, has to be inspired. Mm -hmm. I can then take something that I've written and I can expound on it, whether I'm inspired or not. That I can do, like to delve more deeply, to elaborate and explain it and things like that. But to come up with a new concept or a concept that I just, you know, that I just clicked in my head, it's got to be something that's inspired. It's got to be, you know, it's got to be something that's coursing through my head clearly. Otherwise, it's not going to come out clearly on paper. Where do you get your inspiration from? Just thinking about your life or would, or like, do you go to, let's say a park or do you go to a, I don't know, someplace with a nice view? How do you find your inspiration? Um, well, every morning I pray for inspiration. So I guess I get it at times and sometimes I don't get it as much, but mm -hmm. like, I don't, I guess like, you know, just in my daily life, dealing with people and like speaking to people over Zoom or you know, any other f platforms and things like that. Um, there's always so many, there's so many things you could see about a person. There's so many qualities. Um, in fact, like one of the biggest opportunities I find to see a quality in a person is when I, when I first see the negative, you know, you talk to someone, you're like, ah, I don't like this guy, you know? Interesting. It's like, wait, 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 you don't like him? Okay. Why? Why? What's, what's good about this person? Let's see a strength. And that strength is usually something that I'm threatened by. Being threatened by somebody's strength shows it's something that I need to work on. And, and that's, that can bring me f closer to a truthful moment. Right. Because if you're threatened by someone, you realize, oh, wow, I could do more. Because if I'm, if I'm threatened by them, you want to just accomplish more. Um, so maybe that's how you feel. But on a different note, I know that you've been doing so many things in coronavirus. What is something else besides your book that you've been working on or that you started? So about the same time as, uh, as when I started the book, I was still going into the office. Um, at that point, I was the only one still coming in. I just, you know, I enjoy going to the office. It's like a comfort zone for me. And I was there and there wasn't much work to do. So I was spending some time writing the book, spending some time talking to people spending some time on hold with the airlines. It was back then in the beginning. So there was tons of day changes to do and every airline would only pick up after four or five hours. So I just put them on hold and kept busy. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so what happened? I remember a couple of people reached out to me, friends of mine, and they were just complaining that they're bored. And again, like sometimes I react instead of breaking things down. I'm like, you bored, go on Facebook, type in a Zoom link and make a support group for people struggling. I said it to a number of people. And then I was talking to this counselor, this, um, this, uh, he's a marriage counselor. He's also a counselor. He does counseling with his wife, uh, David Harlap, mm -hmm. a really great guy that I'm very close with. Um, and I mentioned this, like this thing, you know, I was like talking to him. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing so, you know, I'm, I'm so busy and everyone else is so bored. I don't know what's going on. And he's like, maybe you should start this thing. I'm like, yeah, but I have no qualifications and I'm busy and I've never done anything like this. And he's like, you know what? You he's like, this is for you. You need this. Cause you know, I was struggling with something and uh, I just, I just jumped in. I did it wow. uh, with him. Like he, he, he basically, you know, runs the, the course of the group. And I got it out there and I would start it and end it and deal with the times and, you know, deal with um, organizing. Like, you know, there's a lot of technicalities when you're running a Zoom meeting, especially if people who don't know each other. You have to make sure everyone's on mute. You have to be diplomatic about it as well in order not to hurt people's feelings. Um, that was basically my job as well as bringing up different concepts. And the more it went on, 
the more consistent the group became. And now that it's been like, I think it's been about a little over two months. We had our 41st meeting yesterday. Whoa. Yeah. Um, it's narrowed okay. down to about six or seven people. And we're a solid group. We cut it down from daily to, uh, to twice a week. And we're doing it changed from a support group to group therapy. Wow. And uh, everyone is like, we did a progress report yesterday and everyone is just growing and, and doing better and um, really working on things that they, they never were able to work on before. Do, and, does everybody have the same struggle who's in this support group or is anybody that has any struggle during coronavirus or just in their life? Are you asking me who's welcome on the support group? Um, well, there's two questions. Number one, who's welcome? Is it open for the public? And like, if so, how would they join? But on a different note is, do people have to have a certain struggle to join or, or is it just anybody who has any struggle in their life could join? No, it's definitely any, any struggle. Any, anybody that's having a hard time, I think not only can join, but should join. Like there's people out there who just want to help. I, I'd like to help people and there's, there's you know, a, a counselor and his wife who's also a counselor who are willing to sit there for an hour, which is a lot of time and just want to help people. And this, and, do they have to pay to get onto this um, support group or it's totally free? It's definitely free. Um, at the moment, just to answer your first question, at the mm -hmm. moment we closed uh, the support group because it became, like I said, it became group therapy. So there's a need for privacy, but at the same time, we cut it down to two days a week. So um, we are definitely opening. We're definitely open to having a new group open up if people are interested. You're saying it started out public that anybody was able to join, right? Yeah. Yeah. It started out public. I would post it on, uh, on Facebook and I would post it on Facebook groups and I would post it on my WhatsApp status and WhatsApp groups. And uh, it just turned into like good crowd. And you know something, even the people who are not consistently on the group, have added so much to the group and like wow. they're always welcome back and like there's always there's always where to jump in you know you don't have to it's like those tv shows that they're just they're they're great every episode you, you know you yeah. can miss a couple episodes and come back it's all good you know i can't leave, even believe like how much good you're doing in coronavirus like during this time there are so many people that are sitting in bed they can't even get out of bed and here you started a support group you're writing a book and like i know that you also started an employee agency is that correct yeah. So what is your employee agency called and um, how did that, how that, how that happen? Um, okay. So basically the employment agency that I opened up is called Quality Career Choice. I got the idea after, you know, because I'm a travel agent, <clears throat> there's no, there's no work right now. So I talked to my boss and it was nice to hear from him that you have to, you have to know who you are and know what your strengths are and don't take a job that's below your standards. Um, it was nice to hear him say that. And uh, I, I wrote myself a resume and being an employer who I, you know, I'm very picky about who I employ and, and the people who are above me at my, at the company were even more picky than I was. Mm -hmm. I went through 115 resumes and, and messages and emails and things before I found the guy that I hired and uh, he was really good. And I realized something that I realized something putting in that work, you know, finding that guy and the reason why I hired him and the reason why I was hearing why I should hire him from my bosses was like something that I was able to put down about myself in my resume. And I sent it out and it looked good. And um, there were no problems with like pieces missing or what's past this year. There were no questions because everything I put down was well written and my strengths were put down strongly and I put down five phone numbers of people who deal with me on a daily basis now who will confirm everything I said. Oh, wow. Right. And uh, I realized that that's, you know, that's something that people want to see that you're going to be a good worker. They don't, you know, they don't care as much if the resume was written by this company or written professionally, or if you had a, you know, or what happened three, four years ago, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided to help another friend write her resume, and she really, really appreciated it. Not only did she appreciate me writing the resume, but she 
she learned so much about herself by me writing the resume that she appreciated that so that she can go into the next interview with the confidence because we just wrote down everything that she is on a piece of paper. I didn't lie. I didn't exaggerate. I just pulled it out of her. I said, I dug into her past. I said, what, what did you do this year? I did nothing. Really? You did nothing? Let's see. Did you ever do this? Yeah. You ever did that? Yeah. You ever helped somebody here? Yeah. I was like, see, pretty much you were busy. Like, did you ever have a spare moment? You did nothing. And I was able to show her that on the paper. Showing her that <laughs> and everything gave her the confidence to walk into those interviews and say, I'm a good worker. I deserve a good job. Not only do I deserve a good job, I can help you, which is what employers want to hear. They want to hear, can this person help me do well, right? Right. So once I started doing that, I realized that this is, you know, something good to do because I can help people now and hopefully I can start a business and, you know, make some money. And uh, as well as like, because I'm just an updated kind of person, I, I, there's a lot of he things I hear and there's a lot of, uh, most of my WhatsApp chats are groups, which can get, can get noisy, but they're all on mute. So, mm -hmm. you know, we do our best, but. I always hear about jobs here, there, everywhere. I was like, you know what? I'll help people get jobs as well. Wait, but there's more. I can help jobs find people. I was like, what if I didn't have to go through those 115 yeah. people and find that employer, that employee? That would have saved me a month, over a month of time. I would, I would have loved to pay for somebody else to find me somebody that, you know, somebody to realize my strengths, to realize what I need in my company and say, you know what? I have the perfect guy for you. So I don't have to go through those 115 resumes. Wow, that's so that's so amazing. Like I still can't get over how much you actually started in coronavirus. Like people are just vacationing, taking their time, laying in bed, trying to work out, trying people are really trying to do the best they can, but you went like over the top. Like now you have your own business and you have your own employment agency, you know what I'm saying? And your support group and you're writing a book. It's so incredible. Has anybody thanked you for your service um, with your employment agency? Yeah, definitely. Uh, a number of people thanked me. Um, I got a couple of people jobs. They thanked me. Um, the employers, the one employer thanked me. Um, people thanked me for writing the resume with them because I spend real time with people. Mm -hmm. I sat on the phone with a client for four hours, just digging into her past, you know, just helping her. And, um, I was like, you're, you know, you have so much potential. You just, you're not seeing it. Like, I'm going to help you see it. And she thanked me. Um, and it's not, you know, like it is a service that I'm doing, but like, it's not like I'm taking somebody that's not a good worker. That's not a good, a productive person and saying, you know what, I'm going to convince you that you are. They actually are. There's just, it's so much easier to see the good in other people than to see the good in ourselves. Right. And, true which is why I'm good at what I do, because I also see I'm good at seeing the good in other people. So I'm like, are you kidding me? You have so many qualifications. What do you mean you didn't do anything? <laughs> you literally have overlaps of things you did. Wow. That's, that's really, I'm, I'm so like in awe. Like I knew before we were talking, like I knew what you did and then, but hearing you in the interview talking about this, it's just, it's like, it's just like, so like, wow, like I could do so much more and everybody could do so much with what they have because you know everybody has so many strengths. Okay, last question before we go, this is a little bit random, but I do wanna get back to KOBK, kill or be killed. Um, has KOBK had an impact on your workout routine? Definitely, <clears throat> definitely. My, uh, the, the partner that I have that I'm working out with started telling it to me also. If I'm yeah. late, he texts me KOBK. Oh, wow. like, I'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> Like, wow. like be killed. <laughs> <laughs> so ha what is that that's your boxer that you box with yeah yeah he's he's amazing his name is aaron um he I, um he, he hits me nice and hard he's teaching me a lot yeah um, kill or be killed kill or be killed, be killed. yeah, yeah. yeah for real you know um he he's he's a good guy and he's very dedicated and i just try my best to like follow what he does and it's been great. And like a lot of emotional, um, a lot of emotional realizations that I've had during coronavirus have been coming out in my working out. And uh, I think it's important to talk about, for example, it's important to thank God for everything that's going on. Like the first two weeks of isolation, it wasn't productive. It was, it was a very hard two weeks. 
um, especially the first one. The first one was where I realized that I'm too tough on myself, that I call myself names and, uh, and I, I, you know, I insult myself in order to motivate myself to do things. Like if I'm, if I don't, if I want to work out, I say, oh, you're so bloated and ugly, go work out. And I got stuck because I said, okay, I don't, I'm scared to motivate myself. I'm scared to go and do something productive. Right. Right. Why am I scared to do something productive? Because I'm scared to use negative reinforcement. So I'm just stuck. I don't know how to use positive reinforcement. I don't, you know, so I talked to some people about it and I, you know, I prayed to God to help me out. And then I realized I had this realization. There was something I, you know, I wanted to do. And I said, you know what, use what you're used to use the negative reinforcement to push you to do it. And while you're doing it, say, good boy, right? Give yourself some positive reinforcement and thank God it really, really changed everything up. Part of the working out is that when, when I'm dying on that last rep, it's not like do this, like, like, come on, like show yourself, show what you're worth. It's no, you're worth it. Like you deserve to do another rep because this is going to help you. This is going to make you into a better person. You deserve this. Do it, do it, do it, do it. And the, the, the difference between the motivation, the negative motivation and the positive motivation, the negative motivation gives more of a kick, but it can come and go without my choice. The positive motivation doesn't have that kick, but it's steady. It's always there. You know, even on tough days, I can work out. On tough days, I can go sit at the computer and work. Wow. Wow. It's important to remember. It's important to to try to imagine the things we say to ourselves and say, how would this sound if I said it to somebody else? That's very important. And I'm very happy that you're actually saying that because so many people put themselves down. And then when you think about it, you would never say that to somebody else. So I'm very happy that you're actually bringing that up. Before we go, is there any last words you'd like to share or you'd like to inspire anybody by besides for KOBK? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd just like to say, uh, my, name, my name is Sam Weisler on Facebook. Anyone who wants to join the support group or reach out for any help can always reach out to me, no problem. You don't have to know me. You don't have to pay me. Um, I'm just I'm always available for anybody who needs a listening ear or anything. Um, that's A. B is I, yeah, a lot of people help me to get on a path that is growing instead of failing. And I just want to thank those people. They know who they are. Um, they probably won't listen to this because <laughs> they kind of keep to themselves. <laughs> but um, maybe I'll show it to them and they'll hear it. They know who they are and people like this didn't come for free and people, people helped me a lot. Wow. Okay. So thank you so much for, um, for saying that Sam, I really appreciate you taking the time and sitting down with me today. It has been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so, so, so much. You're so inspiring. And I cannot wait to check out that book that you're in the middle of writing. Thanks so much. I really appreciate you having me on the show till next time. You can listen to Hebrew Hits on all your favorite streaming apps. All Sam's links are going to be in the description below. Thank you so much for tuning in to Hebrew Hits. Have a wonderful night.